Ten years ago, the Integrated Learning Specialist Program was created with one goal in mind, to transform public education by making high-quality arts education accessible to all students, regardless of background or color. With Integrated Learning, students think and learn differently, using art and creativity to make connections between disciplines in a way that gives voice to their perspectives and experiences. Any child can find a way to not show up at school. If they showed up there, it's because they care, it's because they want to do well, it's because they want to connect with people. From the moment the student walks in the class, they have a story, a context in which they're living. There are conditions which we don't understand, can't perceive, and don't yet have knowledge of. And so if we approach the way we teach with that empathy, with that humility, then we understand that students cannot learn under duress. Is that young person hungry? Have they had enough sleep? Are they dealing with something else? And it does require an attention that adult or an educator responsible for those spaces must bring to that room. If we start with not pretending like those conditions don't exist, it's about asking questions, it's about listening intently, letting them know that it's not their fault and that they are loved. Our job is to help them find their way to manifest all their potential and not be confused by certain daily actions that might be derailing for them. And we need to see past those and use those behaviors as just indicators to let us know, oh, we need to find out more. We need to help them work through something. Young people can find a sense of purpose to find intention and find direction when they are able to find a creative element within themselves. The power of integrated learning is in the ability to use metaphor. The secret sauce of integrated learning is tapping into our inherent urge to create art, to create an object, to create meaning in our world. As humans, we are makers. We are like designed to create things, whether we're making meals for people we care about or dances for that represent our community or artworks that represent a time and place to record ourselves in history. They can see the through line. They can see the thread that connects their lives and their experience to their learning and to their future. We need to rehumanize education. We need to remember that school is a place where students learn about who they are, where they discover themselves, where they feel at home. You don't want them to come without their imperfections and the struggle that the inquiry, the engagement, the discovery is as much a part of learning as having the right answer. If we don't hear what they're interested in, what their curiosities are, their ownership disappears. If you are truly going to be the designer of the learning experience, you have to really understand student thinking. Do they feel like you want to know and do you make time for it? Create an environment that, they, that the young person feels welcome in. So much of what we are doing as educators is trying to get out of the way of the learning, to open a door of possibility. It's not about having the right answer, and it's not about being perfect. It is about asking good questions that lead you down a path of discovery. And that discovery is both internal and external if you are engaged. So we cannot devalue that the educator cares and is interested in this topic or this question or this subject. Educating is a form of love. We forget about the beauty of learning because there's so much other noise. School was my safe haven where I know I'm actually gonna learn. Those teachers that I had in that tough time in my life those were the people who became my, my guardians. To quote Nina Simone, when love is not served, get up from the table. If love is not present in teaching and learning, they are getting up from the table. So that means that educators have to really think about what does love mean. We're trying to teach about how to live together and how to think about each other and how to have empathy toward one another. Ultimately, that is even more important than sometimes even the specific subjects which we are teaching. Integrated learning raises student engagement and teacher effectiveness for more equitable outcomes. We believe in the classroom of the future, one in which art isn't siloed away from math and science from history. That isn't how we engage with the world, and it isn't how we should teach. Not if we want to meet the needs of the whole child and give them the tools of expression. Art opens the heart, and we know that if you want the intellect to work well, it has to connect to the heart. 
This is how people traditionally passed on information. This is how you showed someone that you cared about them. This is how you maintained the story. Your own narrative was through the pieces of art that were created. People act like everything in their life hasn't been created by an artist. Yeah. Everything, the color of their house, their clothes, their shoes, their iPhone, the, the camera, the pencils, the pens, everything in their life has been created by a creative person. It's been designed, it's been manufactured, it's been analyzed. Someone thought it through from like not existing to existing. So this notion that somehow we have to do arts integration as if it's a new thing, it's not, it's your whole life. It's just that we don't value it when young people do it. I've been in way too many classrooms where third graders have hardly been able to have a chance to paint. We need to implement more art into our curriculum. Bringing art practice into your classroom begins with a teacher being able to identify as some sort of artist themselves. Are you a poet? Do you dance? Maybe you have a crazy Instagram feed. When you talk to young people who've had the opportunity to work in art, no matter what form, it gives them the opportunity to reflect. It gives them an opportunity to find their own voice. It often connects them to issues of justice, how they can have an impact on the world. I feel like the only reason why I was able to graduate from high school is because I was able to take art courses that really got me through my junior and senior year. When young people go into a classroom, we pretty much ask them to only use part of themselves. To use your math brain, to use your historical fact-finding brain, to maybe express yourself in some other ways other than academic, uh, but they're very rarely asked to do those all together. You live life in an integrated way. You're not like doing math here, and then, oh yeah, you're talking to somebody here, and oh yeah, no, it's all integrated. Integrated learning is how our minds make sense of the world, and it's sort of the connective tissue between disciplines and between content and making meaning that is incredibly powerful. You know, a lot of times school is all about knowing stuff and knowing stuff in discrete boxes. But the world doesn't work that way in discrete boxes. The right. world just flows around you and happens. If you just study science, let's say, you might learn how to reanimate a human corpse, right? But if you actually study the arts and the humanities, you'll read Frankenstein and you'll understand why it's not a good idea to do that, even though <laughs> You know you could do it, it's just it's not a very good idea to do it. I think that for the Integrated Learning Specialist program in particular, what really works well is that it's really built on this idea of scaffolding thinking. It doesn't take a shift. As soon as they are comfortable and you scaffold it, whether it's with thinking routines or a hands-on project, then after that, this is how they want to speak all the time. It's not to pull in arts for the sake of pulling in arts, but this idea that if young folks are able to access healing in this way and access this other language, whether it's painting, poetry, any art form, it becomes even more easy to actually access anything else, whether that's math, that's science, whatever it is, it becomes a completely different learning field. Some people will receive information better if you teach them through an artistic way. You know, the world is an interdisciplinary, integrated place, so we have to have an integrated approach to understanding the world very difficult to assess what we're doing. It's not a checkbox on a test. We're really asking people, we're asking schools to do something that is just diametrically opposed to how education has been laid out. And so like, how, how do you know what people are learning? I mean, it's a valid question, right? I think there's a whole inquiry process in evaluation that we usually skip because we want to come up with dots on a line, numbers in an evaluation form. So I don't think you can do a quick and dirty, quick and easy, authentic evaluation. I think it's about the way the students are in the world. Are they collaborative? Are they patient? Can they envision? Can they think beyond themselves? Places that are really committed to this work use a variety of tools. They're not stuck on standardized assessment. How many students continue to stay in school? How many students create things on their own? How do they participate differently in class? I mean, maybe those forms of assessment would be useful, but I don't know how you assess love. The promise is that you'll have fully formed human beings, not people who know how to just add, subtract, multiply, divide, and recite a litany of facts. 
you'll have people who can actually think about how those things fit together and how they shape the world that they live in. For students, this is a promise and a proclamation that what they feel and what they think and how they present are important. That instead of turning out people who just have a set of skills that they can do, that they know what the skills and knowledge is for and they know how to use it. It's a brand new world if we do it right. We are stronger together. It is what separates us that keeps us fragile. The following is a call to action. Louise Music established the Integrated Learning Department in Alameda County with her vision for the need for creativity within learning. Here, she offers her valuable perspective of change over time and invites you to collaborate with intention and the urgency the work of integrated learning requires. I believe that we need to put the world back together again. We live in a society where everything is so specialized and we see that happening in our classrooms. 50 minutes of English language arts, 50 minutes of math, 50 minutes of science, 50 minutes of social studies. And often these content areas are taught in ways that don't really connect to the lived experience of students. I think that more people need to go into classrooms that are engaged in integrated learning to listen to the voices of young people who have real ideas about how to solve problems and what we need to be focusing on, challenging issues such as our climate crisis. Young people in classrooms are concerned about the homeless that they see in their neighborhoods and lined across their freeways. Many of the young people in our schools are migrants from other countries. These issues provide the perfect umbrella for thinking about how do we teach science how do we teach social studies and history so our young people understand how we got to some of these problems that we're all so worried about now? I believe that the purpose of public education is to prepare young people to take care of themselves, each other, and the planet. Our classrooms need to be places where young people feel welcomed and that they're places of belonging, where their lived experience is valued. As educators, we need to be clear that while we all have some set of disciplinary expertise, our job is really not to teach science or English language arts or math. Our job is to teach students. It's astounding to me that it's 20 years now since I came to the Alameda County Office of Education. When I came, I was the only visual and performing arts coordinator at a county office of education. It was the height of No Child Left Behind. We were really lucky at the time to meet with researchers at the Harvard Graduate School of Education who were studying the intrinsic value of the arts. They developed something called the Studio Thinking Framework. Learners were able to really have agency over their learning and to come to difficult moments and persist through them. As well, when arts teachers and their students shared their work with teachers throughout the school, other teachers said, this is a gold mine of learning. And so it began a really productive collaboration in schools and school districts of intentional integration. How can arts teachers work with teachers across the curriculum to engage young people and to develop these important habits of mind which uniquely get cultivated in arts classrooms but are essential for learning across the curriculum and in life. These habits are part of how leaders lead, how teachers teach, and how students learn and think and act in life. We're also celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the Integrated Learning Specialist Program. Over 2,000 educators have gone through the program and are creating whole school transformation. There are three major things that are the principal foundations of the Integrated Learning Specialist Program. First, the essential role of the arts, where all educators come together and deeply experience how the arts are about making, but also more importantly about thinking. Where teachers also interrogate deeply issues of personal bias, of anti-racist education. And then third, Educators learn about and use research-based frameworks that 
allow them to bring their own wisdom and experience into the decision making in the classroom. This is very urgent work. We can't afford another generation of young people who feel lost or hopeless or that they don't have an important role to play. We still are nowhere near where we need to be. The same racial achievement gap that was here when I came to this job in 1999 exists today. In our young people are the solutions to the complex problems that we're all worried about. And they are building the capacity and the enthusiasm to stay engaged even when things seem very challenging and often bleak. I think what's really important is, is that what's emerging from all of this are the voices of the young people. These young people are not simply learning things for the future, but they're important leadership voices today about what we need to be doing. Whether you're a classroom teacher, arts advocate, expanded learning educator, or anyone who works with youth, we invite you to join us in extending the advantages of art education and integrated learning to all students. Rigorous learning isn't just possible without sacrificing the arts. It's enhanced. Together, we can make a well-balanced education a reality for all students.